everyone. The next session is again ours, where uh, we were going to be taking care of a wonderful, wonderful panel around diversity. And there'll be so many things that we will be talking about. Because when we talk about diversity, it's not just about gender diversity, but it's all about bringing everyone in and supporting each other. And today we have wonderful line of speakers and panelists with us. Uh, so I'll give it over to my wonderful friend, Zoe Britterman, who is gonna be moderating the panel. And, uh, and then uh, my dear friends, Loredana, Jessica, Asta. So Zoe, over to you. I'll let you take the panel forward because I'm, uh, I'm just being part of the panel here. Hi everyone. Hi, Randana. Hello. Oh. Yes, we can hear you, Zoe. Okay. It's good. Great. Okay, yes, yeah, split between two devices. Okay. So I'm here to introduce my amazing colleagues and friends, Loredana Mancini, Mandana Verma, Asta Sani, and Jessica. Do you mind pronouncing your last name again? I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. I let everyone pronounce it however they would like, but I usually go with Gottsleben. Okay, Gottsleben. Um, future president of the United States, by the way. Totally. Um, so I'm here to talk about diversity. And as Vandana had mentioned, diversity is more than just gender and gender is more than just non-binary. It really is about diverse contribution to our industry and community and how we can also build that diversity as a community and as multiple communities in order to make the best, strongest community and workforce to secure our infrastructure. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce our panelists and each of them can tell us a little bit more about themselves. Okay, starting with Loredana. Hi, hi everybody. Thank you, Zoe. And uh, it's uh, really a pleasure to be part of this uh, great event and uh, this panel, you know, that, uh, as you correctly said, uh, speaks uh, not only about diversity in terms of culture, age or whatever, but really in terms of the contribution that diversity can bring in industry, generally speaking, and in our field uh, in particular. I must say that I feel that uh, OWASP has diversity in its DNA, you know, because I remember when I first uh, entered this community, it was many years ago, and, uh, you know, I felt uh, uh, really let's say, I don't know if it's the right word, but a little bit ashamed, you know, because I entered a, a community that with lots of knowledge, lots of projects, uh, lots of discussion going on. And I must say that uh, at that uh, time, also now really, <laughs> I didn't understand them all, you know, I, I was a little bit lost, but I, I always felt that, you know, I was accepted. I could say whatever I thought, even if it was not really, you know, the the right thing or the most update uh, solution for something. And it was really a place where I could speak and I could learn, you know. So my feeling is that considering this really, you know, uh, inner presence within uh, OWASP, uh, this uh, group, you know, this community for OWASP, we are, that is women, but diversity and inclusion is really something that, uh, uh, has brought uh, uh, the experience within ours for lots of people to, to a higher level, you know, with the possibility really to speak, to share knowledge, to bring, you know, whatever you know to the community, you give, you give to the community. Something is very useful, something is less, but you feel that you can really contribute and give. And I also think that uh, uh, when, since uh, uh, the community started, uh, the decision to uh, create uh, some, uh, um, let's say, presence in different continents. You know, we have uh, people, of course, in the United States, we have people uh, in Eastern country, in Africa, in Europe, was also another aspect that 
that uh, help us uh, in uh, reaching more people, you know, because you can really, you know what people think there, you know how they look at things, so you can really support uh, this cultural exchange uh, at a higher level. So I do think this, this was uh, uh, quite important because also thinking about my working experience, you know, in uh, other, uh, along my life, working life, I noticed that, you know, from time to time, you think that everybody speaks the same language because we all most speak all technical, but it's not completely true because there are interpretation, there are a culture, you know, background. So when you say something or you do a presentation or whatever, you have a different way, you know, uh, uh, saying things and pushing or, you know, or not uh, pushing. So my feeling is that, as I said, always has always been you know, an inclusive environment, but with our group, we really, you know, help lots of women, but also uh, any type, you know, uh, diversity to be included more here. And another aspect that I think it's quite important uh, for our community and for our committee is also uh, the activities that we are doing uh, worldwide in, uh, uh, let's say, creating uh, alliances or sharing of knowledge or ideas and so on with other community that have the same goals, you know, to have diversity on the ground, really, you know, to bring these things uh, in the on the field, not just speak about it, <laughs> okay? Because there are, as they say, greenwashing, there is also diversity washing <laughs> in the, around the world. And... Uh, so uh, all the activities that also in the different countries uh, with the different people we are doing to create uh, alliances and work together with other community. You know, I, we have here Bandana that uh, has uh, created a very strong link also with the InfoSec, you know, girls, diversity. We have uh, the other people that have a, a present in other groups. I have behind me, uh, you know, both OWASP, we are a logo, but also another one that uh, it's just one of the other women, let's say, or diversity community that I try to, to support <laughs> at my best, that is uh, Donne 4.0. I want to speak about this because it introduced another aspect that I'm sure some other speakers will uh, discuss uh, during this panel, that is the connection on how technology needs you know to be diverse how the input in developing in implementing in creating the new solutions needs different point of view i'm just thinking about uh, uh, artificial intelligence for example but any type of service you know so it's it's important that we think that te technology is not just a product or let's call it standard processes, you know, because we all know there are lots of uh, very nice processes to implement things and to manage and so on, but it's also how they are built, how they are created since the beginning that should include, you know, as we include security, as we include, you know, safety, we should include diversity at its early stage. So, with these two logos, you know, on my back, I really think that, you know, there are lots of uh, possible inputs that women in general, but of course I speak generally about uh, uh, all diversity that we have uh, in our world can really bring value, you know, in some, in an area that is uh, just uh, sometimes uh, felt uh, quite cold, you know, it's, oh, this is a technology, so it works. No, it's, it's not this way. It, again, security, you know, can be seen differently from different people because of different needs and also for, because of different culture. So this is something that, uh, Zoe, I think it's really a, a value, you know, for us and of course for our committee. Thank you very much. Very well. Very well. Yeah, and I really, I really like the two logos, like that you're able to get that. Yeah. So Vandana, tell us a little bit yeah. about all that you do. Uh, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Vandana Verma. I'm from India and uh, about my experience, currently I'm a security relations leader at Sneak, but I'm neck deep into OWASP. My journey started way back in 2011-12, where I got introduced to OWASP. But that time I was just thinking that OWASP is a web testing guide or a top 10. 
But then after a couple of months, I realized that it's a huge community. Somebody introduced me to it. And there my journey started with OWASP. And uh, over the years, uh, I became a chapter leader for OWASP Bangalore, then being part of OWASP Women in AppSec, taking care of um, a lot of initiatives where we started a lot of free trainings and we did a lot of sessions and whatnot. And it was such a fun working with these wonderful ladies. And I remember being so close with uh, Zoe and Loredana, where we, where we were hoping into so many events and talking about so many things and bringing diversity in. And then from bringing uh, diversity in and from VIA, which is Women in AppSec, to becoming a DIA, supporting these initiatives where we can be inclusive of everyone. Not just that we are uh, talking about that let's have women in application security, but anyone in application security can join from any field, from any part of the world, from any color, um, in any age group. And I remember that uh, we were giving a lot of free trainings uh, as part of OWASP and uh, there were people who were like over 60 plus and they were so enthusiastic about learning about application security. They're like, we want to do it. We want to see how it works. We want to see how the different experiences work. And uh, post that in 2019, I remember my friends pushing me to go for OWASP board because there were elections coming up. And I got to be on the OWAS board. Last year, I served as a, uh, as a treasurer, taking care of the monetary things and everything. And this year, I am serving as a vice chair. Uh, so the most important aspect for me were in the community being supportive of everything I do. And even when we all are sharing the information with each other and the initiatives that we are taking care of. So apart from that, I also um, run a certain communities like uh, InfoSec Girls, which we started uh, like a long back. And then we had some up and ups and downs, but there were so many people who joined us, supported us. And here we are growing strong with so many chapters around the world. Uh, we also started InfoSec Kids last year so that we can have some information from uh, uh, the cybersecurity world for kids and their parents. Then everyone was saying that, okay, when we talk about girls, even though it's inclusive, can we have something for common people? Like everyone, not just the people who are in cybersecurity, any normal person, our parents, I know that they have a lot of issues in understanding the cybersecurity concepts. So now why I'll tell you one important thing. Uh, so my cousin brother bought a chandelier, like it was a big, beautiful chandelier, which you can just hang it on the wall. And it was run by like using a Bluetooth. Now, uh, is it too hard to uh, do some Bluetooth hack? If you are using an outdated software, a lot of times that it's easy. So we were very, like, it was very fancy and, and, I, and, and we still have that, but we have turned off a lot of things in that so that it's just a showpiece. Now, why it all started, I just got a script from the internet and on the dinner table, I ran and it was just continuously spinning and everybody spooked out what has happened. It was very hard to turn it off because uh, it was running via script, which was running on a loop. Now, these are the simplest of things, but now we have smart TVs, smart geezers and whatnot at home. So it's important that we run all these things. And that's how we started off with InfoSec Diversity, where we are trying to bring security for everyone, students to elderly people, to veterans, to everyone. And we've also started a lot of mentorship programs because mentorship program is for everyone. And a lot of you I know are being mentors for a lot of students. So thank you for being that. And um, a huge shout out to Zoe for being so supportive of all these initiatives and amazing, amazing kudos to Loredana for being a mentor for all of us and for being so uh, being there for us. That's just a bit about myself, what I am doing. That's really wonderful. Oh, always inspiring. And yeah, I mean, all the different groups, InfoSec, kids, um, you know, reaching them young, having, you know, ingrained in their behaviors to kind of act smartly and, and, um, and securely from little things like password to, you know, when in doubt, step away from the computer, um, cyberbullying. Um, and I guess it depends, you know, elderly. I know my mom's learning emojis right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, yes, so great. And Asta, how about you? Thanks, Lily. So hi, everyone. My name is Asta Sahani. And um, as by profession, I'm working as a lead cybersecurity instructor at Flatiron School, New York. And besides my regular job, I have worked for a lot many communities and I'm currently also working for many others. So I started off my cyber journey in 2015 and that was the time I got introduced to OWASP when I started off my master's degree in 2015 in, in information security management. And thereafter, I just started to go and attend the meetups that used to happen. And that happened way back in India when I was in New Delhi. I just started to go for monthly meetups. I used to be the only woman then started off with two and then I started to enjoy it. Like this is something new, curious and something which has been there for years, but we got to start to know about it from their time. Okay, something is there in development. There is security everywhere from physical to cloud to internet because we started to use internet a lot after 2010 when we had so many applications add-ons and phones have become smartphones. So moving on from that, um, I got married, I moved to US and I started off my journey with OWASP Women in AppSec along with InfoSec Girls. So I worked with Vandana for I think more than two years in InfoSec Girls and I'm still with working with her, Zoe, Loredana and many others in the committee of VIA including Jessica also now. So it has been a good journey. I got to learn a lot when I joined VIA, I, I just knew limited like before I joined we actually I knew very limited aspects of OS OWASP like Mandana said like OWASP top 10 or just the full form of okay what's what's OWASP doing but after joining VIA I got access or basically exposure to different projects specifically different flagship projects which are ongoing currently I am part of VIA but along with that I am part of the education committee as well and Right now, I'm running two other initiatives. So I'm running a Women in Cybersecurity Lean In Circle, and I'm also running a mentorship program known as Cyber Preserve. So I am with students all the time in the span of two years, uh, and specifically working with Flatiron. I have trained more than at least 400 plus students currently in cybersecurity. So that's my passion to learn more and to share my knowledge with everyone. And thank you everyone for joining this panel today. I know this is one of the best panel we could have today to have a discussion on diversity, inclusion, and of course, AppSec. Completely agree. Thank you so much, Professor Sani. Um, so now, Jessica. Ah, oh my goodness. I love, I love going last because then I get to hear all the amazing things about the women that I look up to. I get to share space with all of you and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm grateful for everyone who's tuning in right now. I'm grateful to be in community with you all. Um, yeah, so my journey into uh, information security, uh, cybersec, appsec, all of that, uh, I always say that the industry and, and all of these things chose me. Um, I'm a survivor of abuse and violence and exploitation. And in that, what I went through were all of the things you can imagine in tech facilitated gender-based violence, um, the utilization of stalkerware, spyware, or if anyone has heard of it, used as spouseware, um, all of these things. So my journey in was that I wanted to understand as someone who didn't come from a technological background, I didn't have access to devices until much later than a lot of other people did. I, I came from a lower income background. I wanted to understand how I could use the same things that have been used against me to harm me. I wanted to understand how I could protect others through that, but how I could also teach others so that I could prevent it from happening to them as well and how we could build that into what we do. Uh, I know we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the panel, a little bit more of that, but that was, that was my journey in, was knowing that cyber is a tool that can either be used or bad, or it can be used for good, which is why I say that hackers are superheroes. Hackers are heroes. AppSec engineers, AppSec practitioners, any of you who are tuning in, if this is your passion, awesome. You put on your cape, 
this is what you're here to do. You're here to save lives. You're here to protect people. And I'm so happy that you're here and please stick with us for that. Um, outside of OWASP, WIA and DIA, I also serve as an advisory board member and staff member to uh, multiple uh, diversity and inclusion based conferences, organizations, uh, training groups, women's groups in cybersecurity. Um, I serve as a hacking is not a crime advocate. I'm currently working with multiple domestic violence organizations and uh, anti-trafficking networks throughout the world um, and just a multitude of others, uh, training and information security, uh, anti-cyberbullying, just, just about anything you could think that protects someone and makes them safer, whether that be a child, an elderly person, young woman, just everyone to have a safer, more just world um, is usually where I'm focused. I am currently in uh, additional CISO training because I serve as a VCSO and a VCSO, um, among other things. So I'm a little bit of everywhere. If you ever need me for anything, I always say I'm just a phone call away, a text message away, a message away. If you ever want a mentor, if you want to find where you belong in OWASP and you're maybe an introvert and you're a little bit new, I know Zoe and I represent the introverted world of all of this. If you're looking for where you fit in the open source community, there are so many research outlets and so many initiatives you can get involved with. And we are such a welcoming group. We want you here. We want you to talk with us and to work with us. And we can connect you with so many other people globally. Um, I know we'll get to talk more about this in our other conversation pieces, but just we're here for you. So please get more involved with us and find other opportunities because the research that we do, like Laura Donna said, um, some of my research is in bringing the most vulnerable direct frontline communities into the implementation of the technology that is either used for them or against them, whether that be artificial intelligence or anything else. So please, if you're from a frontline community, we want you here. I want you here. I want you to talk with us. I want you involved in the research that directly impacts you. So that's a little bit about me. It's why I'm passionate. I'm so grateful to be here with all of you and just really excited. Really awesome. Super inspiring what you do, you know, saving lives and everything. And, you know, really understanding how, how you can channel passion into the industry and community. And I see a lot of that. I see, you know, so much of it is really about the people's drive and the people's motivations to mentor as they learn and to continuously give back. Such a big culture. I haven't seen another, you know, as much in other tech communities, um, maybe some social innovation, but um, just like you know, teaching people something useful, answering questions that they have about specific things, making them think about security in, you know, in development in their business and their lives, depending on who you're coordinating with. Um, and just spreading awareness where you can and knowing that you know know knowing that introverts also play a role and that's one of the things that I really love about OWASP WIA and diversity and inclusion being part of OWASP because there are so many projects to which someone can contribute and they can even know nothing about code necessarily going in because they're you know looking for whether it be translators writers um proofreaders or you know people with expertise in security that's not necessarily on the development side and um, also hackers giving their contribution in terms of you know their specific research and um, their specific um, passions and um, they definitely have interesting stories because they're just, you know, really, really passionate about it or really, you know, interested in it. And um, it happens to also, you know, definitely contribute to a career path. But a lot of people just really enjoy geeking out over the subject. And um, so, yeah. And um, so some of that, the activities that we've had, we've had, you know, expert speakers in various domains, sharing their expertise, giving demos, giving tutorials, giving trainings, also specific talks of, talks of interest. We've had hackathons and events, and we're going to have more. 
and you know really at this point looking for more feedback on how we can improve upon this and how we can expand upon what it is and who's involved encouraging other people to also take leadership roles within OS diversity and um also you know again expanding beyond gender expanding you know to neurodivergence maybe to people with different career paths hacker outreach and um so if you could all you know say offhand each of you in the same order Laura Donna Vandana Asta Jessica what would you like to see as a next step what what would um this this round of questioning you know specifically around who would you like to see join our community and bring their perspective name one or two groups Laura Donna yeah I, um, you know, it was really interesting to hear the experience, uh, experiences of the other, you know, participants to the panel, because I think they pointed out uh, a couple of aspects that I think are really important uh, for our community in general, but anyway, for, how will I will say, for everyone. One is connected with the need that we have to create, uh, you know, awareness. So when we speak about kids, for example, uh, they will be our future. So if they, uh, you know, grow with the perception, you know, not fear, but perception of the need to, uh, you know, stay safe, uh, safe, understand the difficulties or the needs of attention that they have when going through social media, and you know, they will be. Uh, next generation of developers, of uh, technician, or whatever. So they already have inside themselves, you know, the, the perception of what they should do. So it's not something that you have to construct on, but it's already building them. So I think this is quite important because, uh, you know, the future is uh, now always connected. <laughs> so uh, there is no more the possibility to go back as well as also Jessica said, the need to uh, create the knowledge also to people that perhaps it's less used to use uh, internet or this kind of things, you know, so they can also su suffer problems of attacks or, you know, stealing of identity or whatever. So I think that the one aspect that I would really like to, to see, but we already do it, but, you know, perhaps we can push more is really the awareness part for, you know, all type of people. And the other aspect that I think it's quite important, really speaking about uh, diversity, at this, it, this is something that uh, I think we should uh, uh, explain always better, is the fact that, uh, you know, there is the need not only of technical people, uh, you know, Ashta, Jessica, just show it. Vandana just got uh, the second uh, in degree or, or how you call it in law, <laughs> you know. So there are competencies that really are not just uh, security based or technical based and so on. You can have people uh, with the law knowledge because this is a, an important aspect to protect yourself or, or the community. You uh, need people with the lang different languages knowledge because you know open source intelligence. And, you know there are lots of uh, careers that we can show uh, to you know whoever young women or anybody <laughs> that wants to enter uh, the, the working field that is that is important. So what I would like you know to to grow to see uh, growing in. In this area, anyway, and for our communities, really, you know, this aspect connected with awareness, you know, in, in all fields, not just for people working already, and also uh, to make the market itself understand, uh, you know, even the uh, industry, companies, public authorities, and people to understand that security is really a wide area, you know, it's becoming more and more, uh, you know, inside everything we do. So this is something that perhaps in the future, you know, not only us, that we are already doing it in some ways, we can improve, of course, as always, but all the community should look at. This is just uh, my one cent, as you say. <laughs> so true, really well said. Yeah. Vandana. 
Yeah, I am totally in agreement with Loredana that there are so many things in cybersecurity that we can start uh, uh, doing. And there are already things which we all are doing. We are trying to do our bit by supporting the community because it's it's all starts from the seed where we sow the seed and slowly and steadily the plants grow to become the trees. And that's what we are trying to do, where we started off with women in AppSec, where we had few people joining those calls way back in 2015, 16. I remember being on calls uh, with you, Loredana and Zoe, and then there were a lot of people chiming in. And now if I see we have Jessica to ask that to everyone growing and we have not just grown in women, OWASH women in AppSec, but we are collaborating with, let's say, Cyber Preserve. We are collaborating with the InfoSec girls and so many other communities communities uh, in even in Italy and many other places where we are trying to be there and even with a lot of other places where we say okay let's have uh, free education free cyber security content training for these people and yes when we talk about cyber security it's not just about application security but so much more we are trying to target trying to educate developers about cyber security and that's when OWASP even has a huge amount of uh, support and efforts to kick that start and even I recently started a project about developer outreach program where we can have more developer becoming part of OWASP because they are the people who know the environment well. And if they know that, yes, this is how things can be molded around security, we can do wonders. And at the same time, it is important to be sure of what law has to entail and uh, what different areas are, are can be targeted. Like uh, I talk about IoT. IoT space is becoming huge. And even uh, when we have these devices near us and in the organization, it becomes important to understand their security. So how we can educate people around that, it becomes important. So these are, these are just my two cents on it. That's true. Yeah. And also, you know, potential implications of, you know, certain ML, um, you know, voice recognition, what are some indicators, I guess. It's a little bit more, more um, far-fetched, but, um, you know, building in differential privacy and seeing what developers are doing with certain, um, both, you know, with certain controls in very, very spe uh, specific domains, specific frameworks, specific domains, but also, you um, just knowing the different environments and nobody can realistically know nearly everything, but you can always learn from each other and always build and, you know, figure out how to solve complex problems in a complex way, but in real, in real time, um, bringing in, you know, the order to complexity is, a you know, I guess a big theme in um, my enthusiasm about the industry breaking down a complex problem and ask that. I'm excited for your, for your um, response, especially since you're a professor and you have so many students who look up to you and who have learned and who've gotten placed in their first cyber jobs. Thank you, Zoe. Okay. Um, yes, I think definitely few of the ideas that have come to my mind is because of my students, like because when they are learning I get to see the other side, how they are absorbing the information. So again, when I, when I see a community like we are and they are, which, which is now. So diversity in AppSec, when I see, I see as a warm community where there is a safe place for everyone to come. I think specifically for anyone who have like, let's say career gaps and they want to build a career in AppSec or in security, uh, how we can guide them because we have so many experts in OWASP already and in VI itself. We have Loredana, we have Vandana, we have Zoe. And I know we are we have other committee members as well who are equally experienced with so many different uh, domains. So I think definitely they can share their expertise. They can share, like, they, they can be mentors to them. And at the same time, something like an open house for people where they can just come and share what they want to learn. And, and we, like, we have now experience. So whatever we have learned from OWASP, like giving them the exposure of learning more about the flagship projects. And, and to be honest, before I was part of OWASP, I had very limited exposure, even though 
everything is on the website you get to know more when you become part of it and i think i have learned a lot from the spotlight series different projects like asvs we have dependency check we have zap zap is already known but but still there are a lot many projects if people get to learn and if we can provide them those workshops they'll get to know like oh which which particular security tool can be used at which aspect of application security or let's say overall development and operations like let's say from design to development to let's say code review testing operations so how different different tools can be used in fact we have a standard for logging as well we have an ovasp standard for logging as well so making people more aware about different roles and responsibilities that they can take based on their passion based on their interest and then of course we have access to our flagship projects and different projects from there they can learn they can learn from the experience of the already present leaders in the industry and plus open house sessions study groups can can really help them because i know when we are alone we are lazy but when we have a group we have people to motivate us so this is something i want to share from my side it's very true very well said yeah there are a bunch of projects um and you know how is anyone going to know coming into the industry or community that all those projects exist or really in most of them and how they can be useful you know how could they could be used for as a hobby initially depending um or how they could be used for their organization um especially startups how they can integrate certain ones and and save a bunch of costs depending um but yeah and now there's a project integration standard of how they all kind of come into play which is very very useful very helpful and um the various talks and bond has given talks in that area as well um yeah i mean a lot of it is just re- you know reaching people where they are no matter where it is and therefore people with different you know experiences are a major asset to our community and being able to do so again whether it be devs devs in specific areas the sys admin network um so you know somebody from outside of tech um it's so rapidly moving that at the end of the day it's about community and willingness to learn and also you know the drive to give back eventually i feel like motivates a lot of us because we want to give but you know in order to really give we need to you know build the skills ourselves and continue to grow and because nobody knows everything i always say um simultaneously be a mentor challenge yourself possibly do it especially when you know, people we're all prone to some sort of imposter syndrome because everything moves so quickly but um always push yourself to try to mentor someone on something or teach someone something even if you don't think you're ready because it's also a great way to solidify your le- your own learning so simultaneously be a mentee and a mentor at all times in something and it's just a good way to stay sharp um and so, you know stepping outside of the day job and doing that as an extra layer of you know, layer of um enthusiasm and passion and that's really what oasp is um i think for a lot of us i think many of you will agree because jobs can change you know whether it be you wanting a transition you wanting to try something else or unfortunate layoffs just a dynamic job market and um you know specific company not or or team not being a match per se and you just need to know that you know appsec or any area of infosec or tech is you know goes beyond that and you are an asset and you should be able to you know enjoy it and thrive and a lot of that is what oasp and diversity mean to me Um, absolutely i think we will uh, hear from jessica as well what she has to share about uh, say about the different things that she thinks can be added here yeah uh i was i was listening to all of you so intently i feel like whenever i'm in for anyone who's new and if you want to come into our committee please i promise you will be smiling it will be one of the best parts of your week or your month just to be part of these meetings you'll be smiling like i was 
Um, but yeah, there, there are so many groups that I would like to see specific to our committee and to, you know, coming into AppSec as a whole. And I, I love what Zoe says to, you know, find people where they are and meet people where they are. Please, if you are non-technical, don't stray away. If you come from a law or a policy background, please, that's, I, I come from a, a policy background. I came from a non-technical background. Please, if this is your avenue into cyber, if you want to dive into AppSec, just as like Zoe said, a hobby, if this is something that you want to do because you just want to learn and find ways to give back and then maybe it becomes a career later, please join us. If you are neurodivergent and you have not found a neuro-inclusive space before, I promise you this will be that space. Uh, Zoe and I will be extremely welcoming to you. Um, there are so many other um, neurodivergent folks that we that we work with in so many spaces. If you are um, gender expansive, um, literally any gender, any sexuality, any ability, um, if web accessibility is your passion, maybe you are disabled and web accessibility is your passion, AppSec is a big deal for that. Application security matters so much to the disabled community around the world because for disabled folks, literally your devices and your apps are your way into communicating with others and to being active in the community. So please, if you want to be someone who secures apps for that, if you are an activist and you care about your community being protected, right now we have state and non-state actors that are doing harm to activists. And it's AppSec engineers and practitioners that are protecting activists on the ground. Um, if you want to help with trafficking victims, of course, please talk to me. If you are a victim of a victim or survivor of any of these types of crimes, please, this is the perfect committee to go into. Um, that's another group that I would like to see more present within our, um, I'm bringing more in, but I would like to see others come from around the world, please. This is your space. This is your committee. OWASP is, we can point you in the right direction, but OWASP, OWASP really is the space for you. I would love to see more individuals, this is going to be very specific, but I would love to see more individuals from throughout the continent of Africa. We don't, we, I say this because I work with so many uh, leaders in the community throughout Africa in various areas, and it's such a strong cyber leadership community. So please, if you're considering going into the DIA committee and being more part of this, please, we would love, 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 love to host more hackathons and more events with you and collaborate with you. There are just so many communities that we really, when we say diversity and inclusion, we mean this, this is an equitable space for everyone. We commit to maintaining that. So please join us, come in, there's somewhere for you. And application security is, like Vandana said, this is, as we see the IoT progress, and it's, it's not stopping anytime soon, it is going to get a lot faster the further we are in the digital age and the fourth industrial revolution and public diplomacy 2.0 and IOT, the more interconnected we become, this is only going to become that much more important. If you're a cyber person who is not considered application security because it's not your day job, this is your place to explore that. This is the place to gain that knowledge. So please, there are just, there are so many of us here who are willing to teach, mentor, learn with you, stumble with you through it, invent something brand new. It may start in this committee. So please join us. This is, this is the space to do it. And this is the time to, because it, we, we don't have the time. Uh, we don't have time. Time is of the essence in terms of securing all of cyberspace and securing the world for us. So if this is the committee you want to do it with, then please, please join us. Yes. Well, very well said. And yeah, we have a mailing list. We have a meetup. If you go onto the OWASP site and search WIA, W I A, then you'll find our committee. You'll be able to search for contact information for the officers like Laura Donna and myself. And you'll also be able to join the mailing list W I A dash committee at OWASP.org. Um, and just, you know, continue to learn and just, you know, be who you are because we need that. The world needs that. <laughs> Absolutely. And we do also have a YouTube channel where we host our talks. So if you uh, if you want to give a talk and uh, you feel that you're not confident, 
we all are here to support you. We will uh, we'll do dry runs, we'll do sessions with you, and we'll make sure you're comfortable and can give a talk there. So we are all there to support all of you. Please feel free to reach out to us. And Zoe has shared the mailing list. Just drop a note there, and we all are there to listen to you. Yes.